Okay, that's the recording started. Beautiful. Hello, everybody. I'm really excited because this is a special vibrational forensics call that's to celebrate our 900th party, which we've been doing all week long in the Women with Purpose and Soul group. So it's been really cool, really, really amazing. And thank you, thank you to all of you who've been, you know, contacting me and saying, yep, I'm happy to do a live video. Eleni, I've got my eye on you still too because um, the week's not over. But thank you to everybody who's done a Facebook Live this week. It's been so beautiful seeing, you know, most of you I actually know personally that have done a Facebook Live this week. So it's been absolutely incredible to get you to share your amazing stories with everyone else and, you know, allow the group to connect at an even deeper level because when we share our stories, you know, we always see bits of our own story in other people's stories. So it um, it just helps inspire everybody. So often, you know, we think that, oh, it's just my story. It's not that interesting, you know, because we're used to it. We're really normalised to it. But we lose sight of the fact that other people go through similar things or parallel things. And when we share our story, it actually empowers them. And the moment that you no longer feel like you're doing this alone, you know, you actually tap into that much greater power of knowing that you've got your people there and they understand you and they're there to support you. So thank you to all of you who shared live. And just a reminder that even if you're not on the schedule to go live and there's just a few more on the schedule for today and then I think we're going to weekend shutdown and just decompress, but um, you can actually post just a you know selfie with your story and just tell us you know tell us a little bit about you and what led you to going yes I am a woman who wants to live with purpose and soul so anyway I could go on about that a bit more but I think I'll do a live in the group later because it brought up a few things this week for me that I want to share with the group but this is a vibrational forensics call so what's vibrational forensics well it's basically what I do with my effectology school students and with my manifesting masterclass students where everybody gets a turn to bring in whatever is going on for them or whatever questions they have around manifesting that, um, you know, that they're not, they sort of need to drill down into. And I call it vibrational forensics because all is vibration, right? So you can always... Just get down to that common denominator. My cat's here knocking down the light I've got on me so you guys can see me. So if suddenly everything crashes, it's the cat. Um, hi, Charlie. Yep, it's all good. So everything, all is vibration, right? And all is one. And we live in a vibrational universe. And we are a being of pure vibration, pure energy. In fact, you are energy with consciousness. How cool is that? Like, just think about that for a moment. You are energy, pure vibration, which is the language of the universe, and you have consciousness, which means you can direct your energy. How powerful does that make you? So we are the creators of our lives. We absolutely are the creators of our lives, whether we're aware of it or not, whether we're doing it accidentally and by default or we're starting to actually tune in, become aware and direct that energy more consciously. And that's what I'm all about. So that's why I, why I call this, this bit of work vibrational forensics because, you know, yes, there's the story and there's the excuses and there's the backstory and there's all the intertanglements. But when you get down to it, every single moment is a new moment and all is vibration. And your point of power is always in the now. So if there's one message, like when I do this in effectology school and masterclass, there's usually a lesson. So I'll give you the mini lesson. The mini lesson is don't worry about the story of how this happened. Stop telling that story because right here, right now is where you are creating the next moment and the next moment. So stop justifying, stop explaining, stop with the backstory. You know, if you need to, to try and get to the bottom of it, do it as quickly as you possibly can and remember that it actually is completely irre irrelevant. What do you want to create right here, right now? So having said that, I'm going to go. So this is interactive, right? It's a Q&A. So I need cues to give you an A, all right? So that is 
up to you. So what I'd like you to do, I ask you all to think about your manifesting questions, whether it's, you know, how come I am manifesting that? How come I'm not manifesting that? How come, you know, this keeps showing up? Whatever it is, or how do I manage this? Or how do I fine tune this better? So everything's really up for grabs because all is vibration. So any question really about life, you can throw in the mix. And um, it doesn't have to be a problem problem necessarily because there are no problems there are only lessons it can be anything so pop your name in the chat box if you've got something ready to go and in while you're doing that because if I don't get questions I can't give you answers and then you know we'll have said hello and that'll be the end of the call so um, meanwhile I do have one that I got sent to me before by Ali <laughs> so the question is if I'm high vibing all over the place, getting heaps of winks, so everybody who's done manif mani money manifestable with me will know what a wink is. A wink is something that I ask you to consciously decide is your signal from the universe, that the universe has your back. And basically, you're manifesting those all day long, right? And it's easy because usually a wink is something like, Ali, what's yours at the moment? Actually, I'm just going to unmute you. Um, Num number nine. Number nine. Right. So it's everywhere, right? It's everywhere. It's in your mm. face everywhere. And the point of that exercise is it's that easy. So if you're getting heaps of winks, feeling good and excited about where my path might be taking me, how much does it dull your sparkle when partners and or kids aren't in the same space? Does it create more delay? All right. This is a great question. And you know what I find really interesting is that when people start learning about conscious creation and becoming the conscious creator of their life and how it all works, they, they get really you know, excited and they get some really awesome results. And it never takes very long before they come back with the question about other people. You know, how do I stop them from slowing me down? How do I get them on the same page as myself? You know, what about them? Like, so, having said what I just said about winks and how they're so damn easy to manifest, why are they so damn easy to manifest? Because we ask for it and then just let it go and don't worry about it. Yeah. And every time it shows up, you get excited, right? And you focus mm. on that it's there. It's there. There it is again. Oh, my God, there it is again. There it is again. Now, can you remember sometimes in um, Money Manifestable when people would chime in with, I can't see my winks, I'm not getting any? Yeah. Yeah. So when we talk about that, we go, okay, why is that? Well, it's usually because you're trying too hard and you're starting to notice that the winks aren't there. The winks aren't there. I'm not seeing my wink. Haven't seen my wink today. Oh, God, didn't see it again today. I must be the only person who's not getting these winks. Oh, these winks suck. Oh, no wink again. Maybe I'll see one on my walk to the shops. Oh, shit, no, there wasn't a wink there. Maybe I'll just see one, you know, as I scroll through Facebook. Where is it? It's not there. Oh, it's still not there. Why isn't it there? It's not there. God damn it. What's wrong with me? Why don't I get any winks? Right? So you get my point. Hang on. I'm going to do this because you're going to miss the top half of me, which is odd. So, um, so the focus is on the lack of winks. Whereas in the beginning, you know, when we talked about how easy it is for you, especially you've always found it super easy to find your winks, you focus on they're everywhere. So when you focus on that they're everywhere, they're everywhere. And you just keep seeing them. When you focus on they're nowhere, you keep getting they're nowhere. So... What's that got to do with your partner and your kids? So when you focus on their vibration, which is a lower vibration, that's where your focus goes. That's where your attention goes, right? So yeah. where, where attention goes, energy flows. That's it. So if your attention is on them being low vibing, it's just going to pull you down as well. If your attention is on, hey, I'm so high vibing, I'm going to do my very best to totally ignore what's going on with you. And actually, no matter what's going on with you, I'm, actually, yeah. the more miserable you are, the happier I feel. 
you know, because it's the contrast. That's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can just go, thank goodness I'm not like that, yeah. you know, and, and you kind of, like you make it a game, right? But the bottom line is you can never pull someone else up. And, yeah. and also, I mean, you can kind of infect them with your high vibration by osmosis, but that's kind of on their end being close enough to actually be able to even tune into where you're at. If they're way below you, you just look like a fruit loop to them, basically. You know, and I say I live in my yeah. happy bubble and that's absolutely fine with me. I love my happy bubble. It's a great place. And so if someone's way low here, they can't touch you. But if you try to, you know, pull them up, come on up here, come on up here, they're just going to pull you down and then you're both down there together. And I know we've talked about this before, but, you know, it's, it, it's in your face all the time. And this is, you know, one of the tests of being a human being, living in this 3D reality that we live in where there's, you know, other people, contrast and so on around us. But the bottom line is that the more you notice that they're in a low vibing place, the more you just join them. Yeah. You're just joining them. And as you join them, then you feel miserable and then you blame them. Because yes. you go, you pulled me down off where I was. But in fact, it was your attention on them being lower than you are that pulled you down. And if you had managed to keep your attention wholly on how good you feel, then what actually happens, and, you know, I noticed this as well with my partner, like when he's not in such a great place, if I can just keep myself really, really high and ignore him, and literally I'll just kind of make excuses to you know, keep busy and keep away. Yeah. But while he's still in that place, if I can stay stable where I am, suddenly he's too busy to hang around me just of his own accord anyway. It just happens because you're not a vibrational match. And it's not until he is more of a vibrational match that he can even sort of be hanging around me again. So the law of attraction takes care of it all. But you wouldn't, you know, we, we live with people and we have these, you know, arrangements and contracts. And so we do find ourselves around people who aren't necessarily a vibrational match. But you'll find that if you're really stable up here and they're down there, you will see less of each other than you usually would. And when you're really high vibing and, you know, like with more distant relatives, you notice it even more. When you're more high vibing, then you're together more. So yeah. basically the bottom line is his vibration is his business. Yeah. Mm. Which can totally. be, yeah, which can be difficult. But just remember that if you just keep yourself where you need to be, yeah, he will kind of drift away and be really busy and find other things to do anyway. Things that are yep. more on his vibration. Now he'll go find somebody else to bitch with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Cool. Does that make Thank sense? You. Does that help? Yep. Yep. Excellent. Totally. Yep. Good I thought word. I was on the right path. Just needed the confirmation of the message. Yeah. I know, we all need to, and you know, I always thank all of you for asking me this stuff because it reminds me. So we teach best what we most need to learn. And trust me, I'm constantly needing to relearn this stuff. And, the, you know, the world we're in is one of full of contrast and that's actually an important part of our growth because the contrast gives us the opportunity to know what we want next. So every time we see something we don't like, we actually know what we like and what we want. And every time we're in a situation that we don't enjoy, we know what we do enjoy. So this world is a, is a world of polarity. You know, we have good and bad. We have light and dark. We have, you know, the polarity is everywhere. And that's what makes this world so rich. So when you become a conscious creator, your job is to actually be aware of that polarity and embrace it and love it. And know that you get to choose. You know, you constantly get the choice. So it's like this amazing smorgasbord. It's like, like that, don't like that. Like this, don't like that. Hmm, I'll have more of this. You know, you don't show up and just keep eating what you don't like and go, why do they keep serving that when next to it is your favourite meal? So the, what, what we often do vibrationally is we get so caught up in what's right here, right now in front of us that we just get sucked into that being our reality rather than realising that that's a, 
an opportunity for us to know what we do want and then to get vibrationally in sync with that. And, you know, once you get to that place where you go, okay, I'm a brain, like Andy Dooley says, I celebrate the contrast, you know, I celebrate the contrast. And we all kind of laugh, but you do get to a point where crap happens and you go, I know this feels a bit crap right now, but I'm internally actually quite happy because I know that this is a really good thing. And that if I keep my vibration high and keep in alignment with how I do want to feel, amazing stuff's going to come out of this. So, um, I celebrate the contrast. <laughs> what's the, Eleni just mentioned the crab in the bucket theory. What, yeah, what's I'll, that? I'll get Eleni to explain. Hold on one sec. Eleni's no. also an infinite possibilities trainer with Mike Dooley, by the way. And she's down in yes. Florida. Yes. Um, the crab in the bucket theory, when I, that immediately came to mind when you were talking about, um, Ali, the people around you. And when you're even slightly a nurturer or empathic, it magnifies it. Because if you put a bunch of crabs in a bucket and one starts to crawl out and sees, you know, that there's an adventure on the outside of the bucket, it's innate in crabs. Instead of to help that one up or join it, they reach up and pull it back down. That's the crab in the bucket theory. And I think for those of us, again, that are nurturers or empathic or vibrationally, on another plane, instead of us being able to reinforce what Miriam said to lift them up, oh my gosh, they're just going to claw us back down if we're not super conscious of what's going on. And you're very much a nurturer, aren't you, Eleni? So you've learned that lesson. Yeah, well, I'm still learning, but yes. <laughs> you keep learning, sorry, you keep yeah. learning that lesson. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's, to me, it, it's, it's so important to have the realization that the boundaries that I create are really benefiting those people that I'm close to as well. So instead of creating enabling relationships, I'm going to create empowering ones and by example. Yes, and that's a really, really, really good point because um, – everybody's responsible for their own vibration, right? Mm -hmm. So when people get used to relying on you to give them a little bit of your energy, you know, you're actually cheating them as well out of yes. being able to tune in themselves to all the energy that's available for them. Exactly. So, you know, you train them to kind of suck a little bit out of you that just kind of keeps them going but keeps them coming back for more. Yes. Whereas when you set them free and you go, actually, I'm, you know, I'm tuned in to my source and it all comes from within and you set that example, they are then actually empowered to do the same. They're no longer relying on the, the handouts from you that actually then have to go yes. within and find it. And, you know, exactly. I think, yeah. And it's, it's for many people that we kind of hit this stage where there's nothing to cling on to anymore and then we finally go, why don't I try and see what's in here, you know? But if someone is always lifting you up, then, oh, that's nice, easy and comfortable. Why exactly. Should I lift up if someone else is always going to do it. And one of my current clients, I was actually hired by her sister, who's the nurturer rescuer, and said, I'm just sick and tired of being her personal bank and this and that. But as I learned about this, the dynamic of their relationship, you, you helped create it. You have to own that you helped create the enabling thing. So step away. Again, we can't, the boundaries are there for both of us, not just for the nurturing side. Yeah. And we are co-creators. You know, it's a, yes. it's a co-creation kind of thing. You cannot yeah. change someone else's vibration. You cannot create for them. And, um, you know, they're, they're going through their journey and creating their own reality, seeing it through their lenses, through their own eyes, and that's their journey. And, it, you know, with partners, it, it can be challenging at times. I mean, I've, I've said it several times that if I hadn't dragged Martin along to San Antonio, we might not no longer be married. And he actually, when we came, because it, it was, you know, the gap was really widening. And um, when we got back from that, he just looked at me and he said, oh, my God, 
how were you putting up with me? And I said, it wasn't easy, baby. It wasn't easy. <laughs> I hung in there, but I thought I'll take him to San Antonio. I'll immerse him in that bucket of super love that is the IP trainer conference. And, um, you know, we'll see how he comes out. And he came out pretty big and it's all, it's all good now. So, um, yeah, but it, you know, it's challenging in relationships and you have to kind of enable them to, um, to do their own thing. Um, cool. Marian, can I add something about the polarity? It just, you made yes, me think of it. That, um, when people, for example, when someone doesn't think that they can manifest and I had someone close to me, a, a, a client saying, you know, why does this shit keep happening? You won't believe what happened to me today and blah, blah. Why does this crap keep happening? And I said, well, do you want to hear the truth? And she said, well, I'm not sure, but go ahead. And I said, every time you open your mouth, you talk about how you've been screwed, how this isn't fair, how life sucks, the universe hears you. So you are a great manifester because you're drawing all that light back to you. Exactly. So it's to remember it's, it's all. You can't have one without the other. Exactly. We have that polarity. And in the last um, level two workshop, I just drew a line on the board and I said, imagine it's a, it's a rope and it's like a tug of war. And the universe is, you know, got this incredible pulling power on one end, which is where you do want to go. But every time you focus on it's not here yet or I haven't got what I want, you're actually pulling on the opposite end of the rope. Yes. And so yes. even though you know the overall, um, the overall universe is geared towards growth and expansion and good things and we do have more, more good stuff than bad stuff in our lives in general, especially in our world, you know, we, we focus a lot on but that's not here yet. It's not here yet. I haven't got it. You know, he said yes. the wrong thing they let me down you know all that kind of stuff and so we're constantly focusing on it and and then yeah we're pulling on the other end of the rope so um we are and and when people say oh i can't manifest you can't not manifest because that is the law you are constantly manifesting yeah. it's just that you can't seem to focus on what you do want long enough to manifest more of that so it's not a question of being able to manifest, it's a question of being able to focus on what you do want and the kinds of things you want more of. Yes. And that's actually all it is. It's a focus thing. And mm -hmm. because remember where attention goes, energy flows, right? And that's why meditation really is the number one most beneficial thing you can do because you're practicing focusing. You're mm -hmm. practicing actually, you know, taming your mind like that monkey mind that just wildly jumps around and you don't you're not even aware of what it's doing half the time because it's yes. so such an unconscious thing so mm -hmm. you know it, it may seem like such a simple thing oh that can't be it but just meditating 10 15 minutes a day will change your life and it will change your manifesting power because it'll change your ability to focus mm -hmm. simple as that right and this stuff, and that's why I always go, this stuff is really simple, guys. It's just that we don't believe it's simple. We try to make it complicated and we get yes. ourselves all tangled up. Yes. But it actually is as simple as focus on what you do want and you get more of that. So um, another exercise that I sometimes do in workshops is I get everyone to just focus on their big toe. And I think I did this with you guys, Ali, the other day, didn't I? Yeah. And you know, focus just on your big toe and then open your eyes or put your hand up as soon as another thought enters your mind. And, you know, I don't think anyone's ever lasted more than a minute. So it's just an illustration to show how untamed our mind is and how we think we're in control. <laughs> we're not in control of our mind. 98% of our thoughts are completely unconscious and just like running around all over the place. It really is that monkey, you know, just randomly leaping from one branch to the next. And then we go, oh, why can't I manifest what I want? Well, because your monkey's gone nuts, basically. <laughs> your monkey's going nuts and you've got no control over him. So let's get that monkey sorted and let's just focus on what we do want. All right, cool. So... Use the chat box, please, because I haven't seen anyone put up a question yet. So who's got a question or a, something they want to talk to me about? So that we can do the... Because that was a really good one from Ali. Thank you, Ali, as well. I really appreciate that. I'll just check my phone, make sure I didn't get any other messages. 
No, I'm all good. Okay, so I'm going to need someone else to come up with another question for me. Oh. Or just another comment or another, this is what I'm noticing in my manifesting. Don't be shy now. You get really good juice out of this. Bridget, hiding. Savitri. And everybody who's watching the recording is going to go, come on, people, ask the question that I want to ask so that I can get my answers. Aren't they? Bridget, have you got a, did you bring a question along to the call? I might ask Ali another question because she always has lots. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me think, let me think. Or just, a, um, actually, it doesn't even have to be a question, but just something you're noticing. Mm that we can drill down into i'm noticing well you know my situation mm -hmm. um and i'm i'm not going to speak those words today because i'm not going to draw more of that but where we are going off to an appointment on monday to get some help um and sort through some stuff so i've just been trying to focus on the outcome that i want you know, all that stuff to be clear, to be, um, you know, debt free, all of that kind of thing. So I'm just trying to turn focus around and acting as if that is already the case. So it's actually made a really big difference in terms of the frequency that I end up going down the rabbit hole is so much not like what it used to be and um it's making a really big difference just switching it up hmm. and delay delay and distract you know all of that that we've done through all of the manifest festivals and i've done them all <laughs> i think and you're seven about to do another up. one yeah <laughs> number seven yeah. starting monday I've, i think so yeah so um it just you know I can just be a total testament as to how it works. Uh, it works. Yeah, so, as but. we say, the shit works, right, Eleni? <laughs> and it is like what I like about money manifesto is, you know, it doesn't just apply to money, it applies to anything. And mm. it, it really does drill down to the very core of how life works so you know i've studied lots of different things and i'm studying metaphysics at the moment and i always go oh yeah that's an infinite possibilities oh yeah that's an infinite possibilities no matter what i study and what i learn it always condenses down and money manifest will really is just a, a an even more simplified practical version of the infinite possibilities program really and um, and it, yeah, it always comes down to just those really simple things, you know, understand that your thoughts are powerful, know that your emotions are very important because that's the language of the universe, get as much congruence between those as you can, act as if because that adds more congruence and it, it actually interrupts your nervous system and the old patterns and it, it kind of, it's like, you know, when you've got a little scratch in the record, you put a little scratch in the record and it just can't quite run that old groove anymore and it starts running a new groove of the new thoughts you're more consistently thinking the way you're feeling that's in alignment with that and the way you're acting that's in alignment with that and that both rewires your brain and it also sends a whole new different message to the universe that then obviously law of attraction will respond to the one thing that when you were just talking Ali that I would say to you is you know you've got a really good handle on all of this stuff just um, remember that sometimes you can try to take too big of a jump and it actually creates resistance, right? So if you go straight to, I'm going to feel like I feel when I'm debt free, the moment you say that, if you're really truly honest with yourself, what are you feeling deep inside of you? Mm. 
right? So, yeah, so you're actually activating, oh, but that's such a long way away and I really badly want that, right? So the more badly you want something and the more you're still seeing yourself as being really removed from it, even though you're going, oh, I'm imagining what it's like and I'm, you know, swimming in it and I'm acting as if and blah, 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 you're still activating that, oh, my God, I just can't wait for it because I'm so desperate for it. Yeah. Right. And when you do that, that's actually creating a lot of resistance. And so that slows you down and it actually puts energy on, even though you're not trying to do it deliberately, it's putting energy on the a really badly wanted. And whenever you badly want it, it's because you're noticing that it's not here. So your focus and your resonance is actually on the it's not here. So that's why in Manifestable, I give you guys winks, right? Because at the end of the day, whether you see a number nine or a butterfly or a star, it's like, eh, you know, you're not attached to it. So it doesn't throw all that resistance into it. And that's why I get you to practice with winks because you really understand the feeling of detachment from that. That's really important. And, and there's a surrender in that. It's like, eh, winks, no winks, life goes on, Right you know you're going to be okay whether you see your wink today or not. So that's actually surrender. That's actually detachment. That's actually handing it over to the universe going, hey, I'd really like some winks. Show me what you got, you know, and I'm good either way. I trust you to know what you're doing. So that's the feeling that, you know, that's why the winks are so important because it really trains you to be really aware of when it's all happening and running smoothly, this is how I feel. I feel completely at ease, completely unattached, and I'm good, and I know I'm safe no matter what. And you want to always take that feeling with you. So it's a good idea to kind of move progressively because the moment you take it to that really big stuff, you know, it's like, well, but I I really want this. And then it doesn't feel anything like you feel about your wings. Okay? So remember that the greater feeling and the, the match of the resonance is actually abundance. Yeah. So um, in, maybe instead of going, oh, I'm imagining what it's like to be debt-free, just keep focusing on the abundance I have right here, yeah. right now. Because yeah. until you're a match right here, right now to what you want, it can't come to you, right? Because you're yeah. vibrationally not going to be on the same frequency. So rather than going, when I have this I'm going to feel like that and I'm going to try and drag that to me right now because I really desperately want it you can just go okay abundance what does abundance feel like and what have I got right now to show me how abundant my life is and you can just start on that which is as easy as going outside and looking at you know the sun just came out and it's Mm. spectacular how abundant is that? I can walk in the sunshine. I can walk on the beach. And I know you do all this stuff, but the more desperately you really want something, the more important it really is to, to do that stuff and to keep it up. Hey, Rebecca Sagoda's just joined us. Look at that. Are you, can you move, Rebecca? I'm not sure if you're frozen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so... Um, Yeah, because I felt that from you before, Ali, when you were talking. I really felt that resistance. The moment that you said debt-free, I felt the oh. So keep that in mind. You don't have to go to feeling totally as, you know, as as if debt-free is already your reality. You don't have to do that. You don't have to put yourself through that. And... um, And trying to do that is just going to create all this amazing resistance inside of you. All you need to do is just, you know, stay in your happy bubble, go walk on the beach and Mm. find seashells and number nines and go, oh, my God, I am, like, so abundant. It's nuts. That's all you've got to do. That's actually all you've got to do. Don't try to make it hard for yourself. Yeah, I get that. That was a great reminder. Thank you. (laughs) Cool. Good, good. And, you know, good health and vitality, like every morning that you get up and you can get out of bed and you go, wow, look at that, I can move my body, you know, I can go to yoga, I can, all of that, like celebrate all of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. 
Excellent. Thank you. You're providing all the amazing questions and all the amazing <laughs> learning today as everyone else has taken their shy pills today. Speaking of shy pills, <laughs> I'm going to talk to Rebecca for a moment. Um, speaking of people who take... No, you, you don't take your shy pills anymore. <laughs> I watched your Facebook Live and it was so beautiful and thank you so much for sharing the... Oh, if I believe oh, in me yeah. story and your story and it's it's so amazing. I'm so sorry incredible. I was missing this. I, I meant to be on here. I'm sorry. But I'll listen to the first part and well I'll and listen to whatever else is still gonna be yeah. shared. I'm happy to be here. I adore you. I adore you too, beautiful woman. And thank you for all those beautiful pictures of the deer in your backyard. See how I you're know. so surrounded by abundance? Your party happening and a guy fixing my air conditioning. Anyway, so I'm here now. You have my full attention. <laughs> cool. Good. Okay, so <clears throat> we've talked about a few different things, but we, we're talking about vibration, right? And that all is vibration. So everyone's, everyone else seems to have taken their shy pills, although I have the chat box up and I'm ready for questions. Um, we've gone through a few things for Ali. So we talked about you know, what if your partner's not on the same vibration as you? And then we just talked about the, I think you heard most of what we just talked about. So have you got anything? Um, so we're talking manifesting, right? Mm -hmm. And again, you're, you're getting pretty good at that. So share something with us maybe that um, in the meantime, that's right, Andy Julie's in the meantime. Yeah, actually, sorry, it's a little segue. Going back to you, Ali, for a moment. So, yeah, Andy Julie um, talks about tell your transition story. And I think I've mentioned that to you before as well. You know, I'm in the process of, I'm starting to. And make sure that when you do talk about what came before, because you don't want to keep pulling, you know, dragging it with you and dumping it in the here and now, you can go in the past. I used to, you know, before. So, and in the meantime, and I'm now starting to, and I'm becoming more. So use those transition words, and it takes a lot of the resistance out of it as well. Cool. All right, Rebecca. So have you got a good manifesting story or a manifesting tip or even just something that you need to kind of drill down a little bit more that you're wanting to manifest where you're going, oh, I'm feeling some resistance. What's going on? Um, actually, the only thing that kind of came to mind as, as I was listening is um, Dr. Hawkins' work. He's an MD, PhD, who studied words and vibration and frequency for like 30 years. And it's called Power Versus Force is the book. Yes. So for anybody who really wants to kind of understand a little bit more about, you know, the vibration and frequency that accompanies words, whether or not that's in your thoughts or the way you speak. Um, it's a great book because it would help you select the higher vibrational frequency words to use when you're thinking about what it is that you want to manifest. Um, and again, you want to use them when you're thinking, you want to use them when you're speaking. And uh, so that's actually what I was thinking when, when you were sharing all of that, Miriam. Um, as far as for, for myself, you know, the big thing I've been trying to manifest recently is balance. And so that's a tough one because, you know, you, there are things you're ramping up and there are things you're trying to, you know, keep in a high vibration and a high frequency. And yet it's about rest and self-care and, you know, making sure you get your exercise and you eat right and you sleep you know, get enough sleep and those kinds of things. So sometimes vibration and frequency can be associated with like lifting, but but fast, and it's not necessarily the case. You know, oftentimes vibration and frequency, although high, it is meaning what it's for the highest good for you, That's which right. doesn't necessarily mean it's so high and fast that it's stressful. So. Yes. That's kind of where I'm spending a lot of time lately because I tend to get really focused and then out of balance. So that's where I'm kind of trying to put my, my thoughts and energy on that right now. So if you want to speak about balance at all, please do. Yeah, and balance is really, really interesting. 
Sorry, what was the last bit? I cut you off. So, so if you want to talk about that at all, that's a big one for me. Yeah, I, I think that's I'm just in a high vibration and everything, but sometimes that feels like you know you're running on the treadmill, and that's not always the best thing. That's not always the highest good. Yeah, that's a really, really good one, and that comes up a lot as well. Um, you know, around like in my work, and that's a really common question. So perfect because we've got a lot of stuff to do, right? Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff to do. And then we get tired and then we get cranky. And the moment that you're tired, your vibration isn't so high anymore. Right. So, yeah. So you're quite right. Like high, a high vibration isn't about running really fast necessarily. It's actually about, it's about being tuned in, you know, tuned in with whatever you want to call it, the universal mind, the quantum field, you know, source. It's about being tuned in so that it's almost like, you know, when you're, when you're um, meditating and everything's kind of just you're in this Zen place or everything goes into kind of slow motion and you can kind of see things from a higher perspective. And, in fact, you're actually not running fast. You're actually kind of going quite slowly in a way, you know, because you've got this incredible high perspective where you can just go, okay, well, that needs to go here, that needs to go there. I'll just start this little domino rally over here. And you're actually really calm and centred and that's a high vibration. So it's not about being yeah. like, I mean, some people are like that, but to me yeah. it's it's not about being like, yeah, 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 let's do this really fast. And, you know, you're actually burning adrenaline and you're actually physically burning yourself out. It's actually about being so tuned in that you can manage everything. You can be that bigger manager and get the intuition and get the guidance and get things that just kind of magically take care of themselves. And you get that phone call that sorts out like what was going to be three hours worth of work for you. And, and you, you know, you're actually tuned into the flow. So when people feel overwhelmed, you know, back when I released my book, there's a lot of practical kind of things to manage your time, which is really just managing yourself in there. But really the bottom line, and that's important, but the bottom line is that if you're not vibrationally up to speed with what you're trying to do, then you're trying to do it through sheer physical force and effort, and that's only going to take you so far. So yeah. by raising your vibration, by the more busy I am, the more I try to remember to actually meditate more. Like I'll slip in yeah. an afternoon meditation and I'll get extra rest and I'll go to bed earlier. And that actually allows me to get more done. So it's it's this reverse of what we've been trained yeah. to do. Yeah. And and then you get then you get all the guidance and the intuition and things just kind of magically take care of themselves. And that's a really cool place to be. So we've got desire, right, which calls for things. And and often we have like a really strong desire. So we're calling for lots of things to come and lots of things to happen. But then if we're, our vibration doesn't match that level, then we're trying to just be a hamster on a wheel, trying to keep up. And, you know, right. I mean, I have that moment pretty much every day <laughs> where I'm going, ah, oh, okay. Yeah. And like now I try to remember that as soon as it feels like hard work, back off. Because what yeah. actually happens is you're starting to vibrate in the, I can't get this done, there's not enough time, there's too much of this stuff. And just like any other topic, you're then putting your attention, this is where we started out in this call, talking about, you know, we often put so much attention on what we don't want. So when we start, it's like, it's a topic like any other. It can be money, you know, and I, I'm going like this because I, I drew a rope on the board last workshop, sorry. And I said, imagine it's like a tug of war and the universe is, you know, happily pulling on this end and then you keep going, but it's not here yet and I haven't got it and it's all too hard and you're actually pulling on the other end. So that's why yep. I keep going like this. So yep. each topic is like this rope, Right, and it's well. Which end do you want to give your attention to, and where do you want to be vibrating? Do you want to be vibrating in alignment with things running smoothly and easily, or do you want to be vibrating with, oh my God, this is such hard work, and I can't get enough sleep, and you know, I just can't get yeah. it all done. So again, where attention goes, energy flows. Yes, and you know, I think it's really important to have all those practical tools of you know knowing how to manage your to-do list and having little systems in place and all of that but that's kind of just the icing 
on top but the vibration is where it's at because when your vibration you have to speed you actually don't even need a to-do list you know have you ever had that where you're so in flow and you just sit down and you just know exactly what to do next and it just yes. creates magic and you didn't have a to-do yeah. list or you didn't look at your to-do list and maybe it wasn't even on there but it just yeah created magic yeah Mary Jo and I sometimes call it the to-be list. <laughs> I love that. You know, when the to-do list just looks overwhelming, you're like, how about the to-be list? And you want to be calm and you want to be relaxed and you want to be in the flow. As you Perfect. Say. That it's is really list. cool. Yeah. <laughs> so again, it's how do I want to feel? Not what do I want to have yes. or what do yes. I want to do? How do I want to feel? Who do yes. I want to be? Yes. That's it. Yeah, because it doesn't, it's like insert topic here, right? <laughs> it is. Right. It's, it's all vibration. And it's like, well, are you focusing on what you want? Are you vibrating with what you want? Or are you vibrating with what you don't want? Yes, exactly. And are you focusing on what you don't want? You know, and it's like in, insert topic here. That's it. Works for everything. And that's yes. why, you know, when I run the seven day money manifest, well, I go, I know I'm calling it money manifesto because that makes people sign up for it, but you can do this for anything. It's all the same right. thing. Right. It's all the same thing. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that was a really good one. And that's a really good one to have on the recording for everybody who catches this later on too. Cause you know, I think we, we talked about other people. We talked about money and we talked about overwhelm and really they're the, the three main things that everybody goes, if I can just get this sorted, my life would be so good. Yeah. Awesome. So are there any other questions or comments or stories anybody would like to share? Those who've taken their shy pills? <laughs> no? Nothing else? All right. Because if not, then I will wrap it up and... Um, post this up for everyone in the group to watch because we covered three big things. So it's been an awesome call and I'm sure everyone's going to get lots out of it. I know I always get so much out of running these calls because I learn. Yes, my love. I, I will just add one thing. Yes. Um, you know, because of our training, typically when I wake up in the morning, I set an intention and there's usually more than one. There's the one for the day, and then there's the one for, you know, the bigger thing that I'm working towards. And in the morning, it's typically pretty easy for me to say, it would like a day of ease and flow. And so now when I say I would like a day of ease and flow, I have forgotten this lately, but you have reminded me to ask for the vibration associated with ease and flow. So it's even okay to actually ask the universe for the vibration of the feeling that you would like to have as part of the intention in the morning when you get up. And it's so easy, but it sets you up for not only the feeling, but the vibration associated with the feeling. And, you know, it's really interesting because I just got that. I'm like, I haven't done that for a bit. And mm -hmm. I can tell. And so I, ne I need to do that again. So thank yeah. you for that because you just reminded me. So Yeah, it's cool. We all remind each other, right? And um, actually, just I'll add one more thing too before I let you guys go. That came up when you mentioned power versus force, which I haven't read yet, but it's on my reading list. So I have to get through. There's like two shelves back here that are to be read. <laughs> um, and that is, you know, the words are really powerful and very, very important. And I would add to that, be aware that, you know, the same or similar words mean different things to different people as well. So always self-check, you know, how yeah. does that feel for me? Because the bottom line is your feeling is the vibration that goes out into the universe. So, you know, and, and I... I put oh, I don't know where I put it out it's too many but anyway I, I teach the little technique of you know when you're reciting affirmations a lot of people recite affirmations but words don't mean anything without the vibration associated with them right so a lot of people will recite affirmations but they're actually feeling quite in contradiction to the vibration so they might say oh I'm so 
wonderfully abundant and my life is amazing or whatever. I don't know. I don't really do affirmations, so I, mine always yeah, yeah. suck. But there's one affirmation that I do use a lot, and that is everything's always working out for me. And I love it because I've never been proven wrong ever, right? So I'll just quickly add this in just for, because it came up. So if you recite affirmations, you know, and they can be very positive sounding words, but you're feeling, you know, fear and doubt and worry inside, then you're not congruent. And then you're not sending out a clear signal. And then you're not resonating with anything because you're just like this mess of a signal that nothing can actually resonate with. And so you get... You know, messy signal, messy results. You get a bit of everything. So it's really simple to kind of at least bring that affirmation more into alignment, make it more congruent by self-checking. So what I say is just say your, your name to yourself in your mind. Just my name is, in my case, Miriam. And notice where that's located because it always has a location and it might be you know, up here or inside or somewhere. Notice the location. And as you keep saying it, my name is, my name is, notice what it sounds like, the tone of it, the kind of timbre of it, the inflection. And then say the affirmation and you'll notice it's somewhere different. And then imagine yourself as you say the affirmation, like clicking it like you would with a mouse and dragging it and dropping it into the location where that, where you were saying your name. Because where you say your name, that's your voice of truth. That's when you totally know something to be absolutely true and you're in complete resonance and alignment with it. And as you drop that affirmation in that spot, you'll actually feel it shift and it will even the sound of it will change and the feeling within you will change. And so then you've actually got congruence between the word and the feeling. So that's a really powerful one because just reciting words, you know, that you're not, con that you're not congruent with in the way you feel, you know, it's just a waste of your breath. So that's a really, really, really good one if you do affirmations. So I thought I'd add that in. Yay. All right. I'm just going to unmute everybody. Um, you're welcome, Ali. So thanks again for joining me and thanks for this amazing week. Thank you to Rebecca and everybody else who did their videos. And um, a reminder to the rest of you, if you want to do a 900 party, share your story, just do a post. Add a selfie, tell us your story, tell us, you know, what living with purpose and soul means to you and why it's important to you and what brought you to that point in your life because I love hearing everybody's stories and it's been an awesome week and I have no idea how I'm going to celebrate the 1,000 party coming up because I don't know if I can top what we just did. <laughs> that was really <laughs> awesome. I love each and every one of you. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thanks, Miriam. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Miriam. Hi, Lenny. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> so everybody said bye. 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 Everybody. Bye. bye.